Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report, the last one in person here at TD Garden before the All-Star break. The Jets are lined up. The T's waiting for me downstairs to go sit by the fire for a week. Maybe play some basketball myself. I looked at going somewhere warm. It wasn't in the cards, so Tatum. I know they were reading off their vacation spots on the Jumbotron in the middle of tonight's game. Turks and Caicos, Vegas for Rob Williams. It's not going to be Turks and Caicos for Tatum, certainly, as he's off to Cleveland. Maybe he'll squeeze in something at the beginning of next week. But Brown started this night handing Tatum the commemorative ball. Celtics had won nine straight, but it ended here against the worst team in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons, who were 32 games under 500 after beating the Celtics. 112, 111 at the buzzer here. Celtics had two chances to steal the win back. Derek White got his third steal on the inbounds after Jalen Brown went downhill out on a handoff. Good play, but was met by Cade Cunningham as well as Isaiah Stewart, who defended extremely physically throughout this one. Emir Doka after said that physicality threw them off of what they wanted to do throughout this game. And Cade used all five fouls, none more important than that one after the steal that White got on the inbounds with about six seconds to go. Uh, Tatum was sitting right up on the other side of the court. White was looking to feed him ahead of the defense, and Tatum would have dunked it home with about six seconds left and probably would have handed the Celtics a win here, but Cunningham fouled White just in time. Celtics needed to set up another play. They get Tatum a decent look on a fadeaway over Jeremy Grant. Couldn't get to fall. There were some handoff options there, you may said as well. Wanted to get more downhill, so it wasn't the look that they were going for, certainly there. And neither was the Celtics' offense, as the Pistons scored 10 unanswered points after the Celtics built a 108-100 lead, I believe it was. Their biggest late in the fourth quarter before Sadiq Bey stepped back three. An uncontested offensive rebound put back past Jalen Brown, who made a critical mistake in that spot as well. Brown was great early, first half, scoring at will and setting a tone again for the Celtics offense that honestly was pretty good, over 50% from the field, 40% from three, 29 assists, uh, but the 18 offensive rebounds that they allowed, as well as 15 turnovers, tons from Jason Tatum. Uh, as you may have said post game, left a sour taste at the end of what's been the Celtics' best streak of play in years. To do it against the worst team in the NBA, who kept handing Boston opportunities to take this one back, it has to be frustrating for everyone involved. Tatum stormed off the court after that miss. Uh, I'm sure they'll be able to reestablish themselves next week. And the question I posed here is this worrisome heading beyond the break? Rob, Smart, missing for this one. You didn't see the organizing that Smart was giving them in recent weeks. White did an okay job, shot 3 of 10 from the field. Wasn't great from a shot-making perspective, but 6 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, and 2 blocks. Nothing to snub your nose at there. And Al Horford did a ton of work in the passing and rebounding game. 19 points to go with it. One of his best games all year. And Grant. Three threes to start the fourth quarter. I thought everybody played well in spots. It was just the guys that you lean on and who have gone on an upward trajectory for so long in terms of their ability to lead this offense. Tatum and Brown taking on bigger responsibilities in the playmaking game, especially late, weren't able to get it to go. And the trends are troubling from a you know point differential standpoint in terms of the results that the Celtics are seeing. Well over 500 when they win by six points or more. When a game's decide, or you know, win or lose, when a game's decide by less than that, they're remarkably worse. I believe under 500 in those spots, and that's the difference in their record, at least leading up to this recent stretch of play where they have been able to get done in those spots or winning by so much that it doesn't matter. The execution in the fourth quarter, I said earlier this month, still not solved. And as they get into more of these games after the break, whether it's with a Detroit or a Brooklyn, who they're going to see a week from tonight, that's where they have to clean things up here. Brown should, did some things on the ball that were encouraging tonight. Quicker decisions, but late. Those two key mistakes on both ends of the floor cost them, as well as Tatum. Throwing the ball out of bounds at points. Losing the ball to Storm Cunningham. 
on a physical switch. And listen, Cunningham, Stewart, all those guys, they were bumping and bruising out there. That is certainly part of how the Pistons want to play, but you let the worst team in the NBA impress their style on you, even if you don't get all the calls that you want. You deserve that loss, and the Celtics certainly did here. Had every opportunity to take this one back. Had a solid lead, eight points with three minutes to go, and the three started falling for the Pistons, who hit 16, shot over 50% from deep, hit some tough shots, and that certainly can be a difference maker in a game like this, but so is the physicality and rebounding of the Pistons, which are areas where it comes down to attention for detail and focus, which... Head of the All-Star game, all the analogies that I predicted Jimmy would make and he did make on the post-game show in terms of Friday, vacation, last day on the job, those were all out there. So that eases your concern over a loss like this, but you don't want it to spiral into the break. Certainly, maybe it's even better to just get that loss out of the way and not have that win streak uh, motivating the conversation around you heading into the break. You're just playing really well right now. You're not looking for 11 straight against the Nets when they get down to Brooklyn next week and that's where we'll pick it up all-star game i'm sure we'll do something off that and there's rising stars and other things going on over the weekend no celtics participating in that so we'll all be unwinding aside from sunday and we'll pick it back up on the road celtics all access clns media we will be in brooklyn when the celtics take on the nets steve nash said today he hasn't seen ben simmons on the court still no timetable for his return and they don't have a good idea of what kind of shape he's in in terms of being able to ready play, ready to play in the near future here. So I suspect he won't be playing in that game, but who knows? Kyrie Irving, is Eric Adams weighs that mandate. Could that be his first game back, barring some changes here? I doubt it too, but certainly the Nets are going to be a team that keep an eye on down the stretch there. And keep your eye locked to LinkedIn Talent Solutions, who graciously supports the Garden Report throughout this season. You know the... URL at this point, linkedin.com slash garden. Go there, post your job for free. 700 million people are on LinkedIn. So go over there and tailor make your job to find the candidates who fit your profile best, what you're looking for. It's tough right now, but LinkedIn gets it done. LinkedIn Talent Solutions, Garn Report, Celtic CLNS, and CLNS Media. I'm Bobby Manning, live from TD Garden. The Celtics lose to the Pistons 112-111, and they are off into the All-Star break, 34-26. and 26. Enjoy your break. We'll enjoy ours, and we will talk to you sooner rather than later. And if you get in that Discord, it's going to be sooner. CLNSmedia.com slash Discord. Join the community. I'm heading to chat in there now, and we'll be back here at TD Garden late next week.